Dun, 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 dun. Hello, everybody. We're going to do something a little bit different in this lesson. What we're going to do is uh, we're going to uncover or discover the top five myths surrounding the PTE. Some of them are true, and some of them are false, and some of them might be true. Anyway, let's take a closer look at them. So the top five PTE myths, these, by the way, basically exist on YouTube. The first one is the backspace key conspiracy. And this one has been promulgated, there's a nice word. And what it suggests is that if you use that backspace key, then you're going to get a low spelling score. And the way you get around this is to highlight the text and then type over the top of it. Let's have a closer look at this one. Here's how this one came about. A student took a PT and said, I got a low spelling score. I use the backspace key. Therefore, the backspace key must cause a low spelling score. Okay, this is a confusion between cause and effect, right? And there's a little saying in science, which is correlation is not causation. That means if two events occur at around the same time, it doesn't mean that one caused the other. They're just coincidentally happening at the same time. Uh, for example, someone reversed into my car the other day. At the same time, I was at the supermarket buying a bunch of flowers. Now, is there a relationship between buying flowers and having someone reverse into your car? No, there's not. Certainly buying flowers doesn't cause a car accident, right? It's just correlation, two events at the same time. So this one is false. And let me go into it in a little bit more detail. So your spelling score comes from two tasks, write essay, where you'll get zero, one, or two points, depending on how accurate your spelling is, and summarize spoken text, where you'll get zero, one, or two points, depending on how accurate your spelling is. Now, what we can infer from seeing a lot of report cards is that spelling isn't weighted heavily. A lot of people get low spelling scores, but they'll still get a perfect uh, writing score, for example. This happened to me, I think I got 66 in spelling or something like that, but I got a 90 in writing. Uh, so clearly there's, uh, you, can, you can infer from that that spelling doesn't carry much weightage in terms of score points. That's about all we can know about this. The other thing that just totally demolishes this conspiracy theory is that a lot of people get 90 in writing Oh, sorry, 90 in spelling, and they do use the backspace key. So therefore, this one is busted. This one is not true. Okay, the second myth is that the PT is discriminatory. Hmm, here's how this one works. My wife has a high-pitched voice, and she got a low speaking score. Therefore, the PT must be discriminatory against women. Okay, well, this one, the PT is discriminatory. That is the nature of what it does. It's discriminating your pronunciation. It's discriminating your oral fluency. It's discriminating your overall speaking ability. But it's not doing it according to sex or gender. It's doing it according to intelligibility, how clearly you can be understood, and the clarity of your overall speaking according to pronunciation and oral fluency. So, and the other thing to keep in mind here, this is false by the way, it obviously is not true. The PT speaking algorithm was developed using thousands of people's voices, both men and women, from 126 countries using 96 different languages. This is how they actually created the algorithm. So there is certainly no discrimination against women there. One thing you will have to keep in mind is that it's assessing various things, right? It's assessing oral fluency, for example. Now, oral fluency consists of various components, such as word stress, such as rhythm, such as intonation, such as pausing, such as chunking, etc. There are all these little uh, micro skills that go into a high oral fluency score. So if you're not getting a high oral fluency or pronunciation score, uh, perhaps do something about it. Perhaps do some preparation, for example, or get some feedback. So that one's been busted. Okay, conspiracy theory number three is that 
You should skip certain tasks to save time. Okay, here's how this one works. The student says, multiple choice is worth fewer marks, so skip it to save time for other more important tasks. Now, the truth about this one is that nobody knows the weightage of the tasks, except for Pearson. So don't risk it, answer all of the questions. It's kind of a crazy idea to skip certain tasks because somebody believes that another task is worth more points. It's just not worth doing that. What you need to do is worry about time management. Make sure you have enough time to answer all of the tasks as best as possible. That's like, if you're sitting a maths test, you wouldn't skip questions, right? Cool, okay. So that one is just a bad idea. Don't skip tasks. What you should do instead is Google PTE time management You'll find a blog from E2 Language right at the top called Effective PT Time Management Tips. You might want to read that blog. Or if you'd rather do something a little bit more active and fun, you can join our live classes where every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, twice a day, we run uh, live classes and mock tests with expert teachers where you can actually practice under time conditions. That's a cool thing to do. Conspiracy theory number four is that the PT official mock test is hard. And this actually might be true. And I mean hard compared to the actual test or harder than the actual PT test. Uh, we've got a little bit of evidence to suggest that this might be the case. One is we've seen thousands of students PT mock test scores, and then we've seen their actual scores. And it tends to be, their actual scores tend to be I don't wanna say this because it might not apply to you, but they tend to be a little bit higher, right? The other thing is we actually did an analysis of the PT official mock test. We looked at all the different questions. We broke down all the vocabulary and looked at the complexity levels. And it turns out that most of the questions in the mock test are up towards the difficult, uh, difficult end of the spectrum. Just remember when you take the PT that some of the questions are gonna be sort of intermediate, some will be upper intermediate, some will be advanced, and some are gonna be super difficult. So there's a, there's a range of difficulty levels that you'll experience in the PT. And the mock test actually has, yeah, most of them are pretty tough actually. So it's certainly good practice. And I recommend doing this like before your test just to make sure that you're ready. But I recommend something else. I recommend that you take E2 Language's mini mock test with feedback to start your preparation journey. The reason why is that not only will you receive a score for your listening, reading, writing, speaking, for example, but you'll also receive a score for each of the tasks, such as read aloud, repeat sentence, describe image, write essay. And not only that, you're going to receive teacher feedback on your speaking and on your writing performances. So this is a great way to start your preparation. So check out e2language.com and think about signing up to the mini mock test with feedback. It's much more than a mock test. Okay, conspiracy theory number five is the position of the microphone. Do, 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 do. This one sort of has gone away over time. I think uh, something may have been going on early on. Let's take a look at this one. So if there were any issues, they seem to be fixed now. We don't get many complaints from students at all. If you do get a 10, however, on oral fluency or pronunciation, or both, I should say, if you get a 10 on both oral fluency and pronunciation, then perhaps you should challenge the score because a 10 actually means that you got zero or nothing. So maybe there was something going on technically. If you just got a low score for oral fluency or pronunciation, like in your 20s or 30s or 40s or 50s, it's probably not a microphone issue. I hate to say it. It's probably the way that you're delivering your speech, okay? Or maybe it's the interference of your first language while you're speaking English in terms of pronunciation. So do keep that in mind. Um, yeah, so maybe not the microphone. Okay, let me just talk a little bit more about the microphone. Let's pretend that this is the microphone. What you wanna do is just put it just like you would when you're speaking on your mobile phone, okay? You don't wanna put it directly in front of your mouth because there are certain sounds called plosives, 
P, for example, P. You know when people are speaking in a microphone and it makes that B sound, that really loud sound? It's because there's a puff of air coming out with P and F sounds. So just put it to the side of your mouth, just to the side of your mouth. P, 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 P. So it's not getting those P sounds and those F sounds, those plosive sounds. Apart from that, the microphones work beautifully. Okay, cool. All right, if you're interested in the technical ins and outs of the PTE, you might wanna check out E2 Talks, which is a podcast that E2 Language does. And in one of the podcasts, I had the opportunity to talk to David Booth, who is the Director of Test Development at Pearson. So I sat down with this guy for like an hour and I picked his brains about all the different PTE tasks. And I asked him all of these tough questions and he answered them fully and transparently. And it's, it's, it's a really good source of information. So do listen to that podcast if you wanna know the ins and outs of each of the PTE tasks. But more than anything, you should sign up for free at e2language.com because if you're concerned about your PTE, if you're not quite ready, or if you've taken it, you've been unsuccessful, whatever it is, check out e2language.com. We've got a range of different packages and courses that can help you out, including live classes, tutorials, feedback, and now this fabulous mini mock test with feedback. Anyway, I hope uh, there's a little bit more clarity around those myths on YouTube and just be a little bit careful with what you believe, okay? You wanna make sure that you're getting good information. Make sure you subscribe to this YouTube channel. See you later, my name is Jay.